I'm Ryan Brown. I'm the director of the Masters Academy of Art, and I am going to be making a few short videos on materials. Uh, talk about which materials I use um, and why. Uh, this first one, I'm going to talk about brushes, uh, including you know what types of brushes I'm using, uh, the shapes of the brushes, the length of the hair, um, and then I'll show you briefly how to wash your brushes so that um, uh, they'll last longer. I mean, brush, brushes, obviously, if you have a, um, a disease like I do, uh, where buying brushes, you, uh, you're addicted to it and you can't stop, uh, it can rack up um, quite an expense. So you want to make sure that you are uh, increasing the longevity of the life of the brush uh, with proper brush care. So we'll talk about that uh, at the end of this video. But just to start out, um, the brushes I use the most um, by far are rosemary brushes. Uh, they're amazing people. Rosemary and Simi and all the people that, that make the brushes are unbelievable. Um, I have a brush set. I might as well plug. It's, uh, it's called the Ryan Brown brush set. This is, uh, I think there's 38 brushes in here. It's a great starter kit for anyone that's um, looking to get into oil painting. I'll, I'll just kind of talk about a little bit what's in here. Um, the Long Filbert series uh, 2065. Um, this is a number eight. I like the long filberts. So typically, a filbert uh, shape is curved at the end. If you turn it sideways, it's flat. Um, you get a lot of versatility out of uh, this, or, uh, you know, it's my favorite shape of brush. Um, and uh, typically, a filbert is about half, this is about one and a half times the length of a normal filbert. So, a normal filbert would be maybe like this long. Uh, uh, I like the longer filberts, especially in real hair. This is a hog hair uh, bristle brush because they wear down so nicely. Um, so, and, and they give just a little bit more bounce. They hold a little bit more paint. So I, I always like the longer hair. Uh, there's something called an Egbert, which is again like a little bit longer than that. That's a little bit too bouncy for me. I've never really liked those brushes. But this middle length um, between like a normal one and the Egbert is the perfect length. It's, it's uh, by far, I mean, I use these every day. Uh, almost every single brush I use is, um, is that shape. So uh, in this brush set, there's a bunch of these hog hair bristle brushes uh, in the filberts, different sizes. Uh, and those, those will last you a while if you take care of them because the, the uh, real hair brushes wear down very nicely um, and uh, they just they just last a long time typically I'm using bristle brushes early on in the process of a painting uh, where I'll, I'll do more scrubbing I'll be piling on a bunch more paint um, and uh, when I want to get more sensitive uh, I use these ivories um, probably more than anything um, I use the ivory long filberts I'd say 90% of everything I paint is done with different sizes of um, Rosemary's Ivory Long Filbert brush. Uh, so in this set, there's a number of um, sizes of, of uh, the ivories as well. Uh, that's a synthetic brush. Um, so it's, it's a, a little bit softer. Um, I can get a little bit more sensitive uh, um, handling with that. They also have what is called an evergreen, which is the same thing, same filament as the, uh, the ivory. They just wash it a few extra times, and that's what makes it green. And so the, the evergreen is a little bit softer than the ivory. Uh, I like both of them. I just happen to use the ivory, uh, again, for almost everything. Um, what else is in here? We've got uh, a couple of these combers. Uh, now, a few years ago, um, I was using these uh, uh, genuine mongoose hair brushes, which really are like my favorite hair uh, brush ever made. But they've outlawed the use of mongoose hair, so when they did that, I bought a ton from Rosemary just you know before they ran out. Uh, it's still my favorite brush, um, but I have to kind of 
supplement um, the use of it because uh, you know that was uh, a few years ago that I ended up buying a bunch and uh, I'm scared to run out of them. So I use them sparingly, but I supplement their use with um, these synthetic, um, they're called Eclipse Long Combers. They're really soft, they're synthetic, um, but it, you know when you're trying to get really delicate um, uh, finishing touches, these are great brushes. Uh, again, the, the hair is a little bit longer, so you get a little bit more delicate touch with it. You can see if you turn it to the side, it has you can get like a razor sharp edge with it. They're they're really great. Um, synthetics do wear out a little bit faster than uh, than genuine hair, but they're a little bit cheaper, so um, they're easier to replace. Typically, when a um, when a synthetic starts to wear down. Um, they curl it at the end like this. When they do that, I tend to just start using those for scrubbing. I, I use them for beginning layers and they're still great. They hold a great amount of paint. Um, and, and I also use them for like uh, painting grass, painting trees, um, because I want a sort of abstract edge and that these can give. So they're still super useful even, even when they start to wear out a little bit there at the end. Um, but if I'm doing super careful work, um, say on a, on a portrait or something, um, then I always like to have plenty of brand new ones on hand because uh, I have more control with that. My goal is to never wash a brush again, to finish a painting and give my brushes away and just grab new ones and start with new brushes every time I paint, but I can't afford that yet. That's the goal. That's when I know I really made it as a painter, when I can do that. Uh, anyways, this brush set you can get at Rosemary. They're awesome. Um, and it's a great kind of all around brush set to get started as an oil painter. The last two brushes that I use in Rosemary, I just started using these. They are these ivory riggers. Um, again, the ivory filament is something I like a lot. And they, these are really long, uh, skinny, round brushes. Um, I use these for signing my name. I use it uh, for very delicate work with uh, branches, tree branches. Um, that's, that's kind of mostly what I, the use that I have for it uh, is in landscape painting or signing my name, but they're brilliant um, for, for what it allows me to do in terms of really delicate work. Um, and that's really kind of the bulk of, of what, I, what I use uh, in terms of rosemary brushes is uh, these riggers, the, the, the long combers, um, the ivories. Again, the ivories I use 90% of the time for 90% of my paintings. So, um, and then the, uh, the bristle brushes. So um, yeah, I love Love rosemary brushes. Some other brushes that I really like, I've used for a really long time, are Trikel. Um, they're a great company. They, I've known them, gosh, I don't know, since I think 1999, 2000. Um, and, uh, and so uh, I've used their, um, mostly their bristle brushes, um, which are great, the hog hair bristle. Again, the same thing. Uh, I love the longer hair. These are the old, this is how you can tell I've known Trickel for a long time because I have the old green handle ones. Now they make them in the black handle with a silver stripe. But same thing, I like the long filbert shape typically most. I do get some long flats, um, but typically the long filbert. I've also, uh, years and years ago, bought a bunch of these silver Grand Prix brushes. Um, they're a lot more expensive uh, and really same quality as Rosemary or Trickel. They're, they're, they're all good um, and I've used them all and uh, uh, enjoyed using them all. Uh, the, the other thing I use um, uh, typically with, uh, with Trickel is these small golden taclons, these small rounds, which really I use for if I'm doing a really small head I'll use it for, for uh, some of the specific aspects of the painting. Uh, mostly I probably use it for um, really delicate uh, uh, 
elements of a landscape like branches or whatever uh, and then signing my name. I very rarely go this small with a brush. That's basically all the brushes I use. Uh, I, I don't have any claim on anything, you know, saying that these are the best shapes, the best uh, um, types of brushes. I mean, that, you, that's something you have to feel out on your own, uh, whatever works for your purposes. Uh, but for me, you know, I've, uh, I guess I've been, you know, testing a, a lot of things out for the last 20 years. These are the ones that I um, have come back to and, and um, that have worked the best for me or the most consistent. And um, so, uh, yeah, try them out, uh, see what you think. And I'll show you how to um, wash them, take care of them now. Okay, so brush care is super important uh, to increase the longevity or the life of your brush. So it's something I try to teach uh, my students. Uh, I was taught this by William Whitaker, the painter, um, and it, it's definitely made a difference in how long uh, my brushes last. So one of the things to think about uh, is you can get uh, linseed brush soap, linseed oil brush soap, which uh, there's, there's a bunch of different brands of that, but it tends to uh, condition your brush a, a little bit better. And, um, it washes your brushes out really nicely. And then after um, you wash your brush, you wanna dry it off really well. And uh, I, I use a, um, I used to use like a hair conditioner, just a, a, just a little bit of a dab of it to shape the brush and then store it horizontally overnight. And then you just pick it up and, and use it the next day. Um, but shaping it after washing it is really important because it retains its shape better. Um, and obviously a hair conditioner is going to um, condition the hair of your brush. Um, even the, it, it even helps with the, the synthetics um, to, to retain those shapes. So, and you're using su such a small amount that uh, I've never seen any adverse effects in, in uh, my painting from it. Uh, so the, the linseed oil brush soap that I use is from Trakel. I just It just comes in these little cakes. It travels really well. It's dry, it's you know not liquidy, so it, it travels well. Um, they also make what's called a brush restorer, which is great. It's like, um, you know when you buy a new brush and it's, it's stiff, uh, it has like a, like a cornstarch or something in it? Um, they use half that and half um, a hair conditioner in, in this mixture. So uh, at, after I wash the brush, I dry it off, I just dip a little tiny bit in the brush restore and that shapes it and, and the next morning it feels like a brand new brush. So um, th that's, those are the, the two products that I use when washing my brushes. Um, you can get those at treekel.com. So uh, I just take this and I wanna get pretty warm water. Um, uh, if you think about it, it, you know, oil is just like a fat. So uh, the warm water is going to make it a little bit looser than uh, cold water. Um, so uh, I just get it wet and get some of the brush soap on it. And then I just work, uh, the, this little metal piece is called the ferrule. And I just work with my thumb uh, up from the ferrule, just kind of pressing up and turning the brush. As I do it, I want to get that soap into the into the hairs. You can see that paint coming out. And then just rinse it out, get some more. I, I do this two or three times until um, no more paint comes out. Just really work as much of that paint out as you can. You can see how much is coming out of there. Rinse that out again. And then uh, the last time I do it, I work that out as much as possible. Before I do this, I guess I, guess I should have mentioned that uh, obvi obviously I wipe the, uh, what, at the end of a painting session, something I didn't show is I wipe all the, the paint out of it into a paper towel and then I'll rinse that in some mineral spirits and try to get as much out, rinsing it out in mineral spirits as I can um, so that when I'm using the linseed oil brush soap, it doesn't take as long. Um, that's probably a step that most people already know. Uh, 
But once I work most of that out, the one of the keys is to, uh, sorry, let me just do that one more time. I had a little bit more oil in it than I thought it did. So let me get just a little bit more. I want that to be pretty clean there at the end. Uh, the last thing I do is grab the end of this and I work, I work the uh, bristles back and forth like that. What that does is it pulls like some of the oil that'll settle down into the ferrule. It pulls that out. And that's kind of a key thing. You can see how much oil is being pulled out of that um, ferrule. And then I'll just rinse it out. If too much oil gets down in that uh, metal piece, it starts to splay out from the bottom, and then your then your brush is pretty much dead. I just grab a towel and dry that off really well, and then I grab uh, just a little bit of that hair conditioner, just a dab, and uh, work that into the brush. Very little of it, just to shape it. And then I will um, place it on a counter overnight, and tomorrow it's gonna it's gonna be like a new brush. Uh, ideally, you would do this every single night after you're done painting at the end of a painting session. If you get lazy, like um, a lot of us, uh, what I do is I rinse all my brushes out in the mineral spirits, try to get as much out as I can. I know if I'm gonna paint tomorrow on the same thing. Um, uh, that uh, I, I'll just put them in the freezer with my uh, paints and um, I can start painting with them again tomorrow. I try, if I am going to do that, I really try to wash my brushes at least once a week. That's such bad advice. The best advice is wash them every night, but um, at least, at least once a week. And, and if you freeze them in between, um, you know, you're not going to have as much paint drying in the, in the bristles. But uh, still, I think uh, washing them every day is probably the best practice. So um, that's it. If you follow, if you follow that brush care um, technique, I think your, your brushes are going to last a lot longer for you.